Hey everybody and welcome back. I'm out here again at the Summerton Airport because I've got a, well let's just call it a request that um, people keep asking me about and that is how do I use this plane here to do instrument work. So what I decided to do is I'm going to take you guys up today in 8 Lima November and what we're going to do is I'm going to go through the processes and procedures that I use to fly this on at least one if not two different instrument approaches. So the plan today is we're going to, we're going to do the VOR17 approach and then we're going to follow it up with an RNAV17 approach, both to the same runway in Yuma, both with similar um, profiles for the approach, but this will give you a good idea of how I use the avionics in this plane in order to fly an instrument approach. I've already finished the pre-flight, so I'm going to catch you guys up in the air. But before we get on the air, I need to thank the sponsor of this video, which is GRT Avionics. GRT is an American-based company making, making highly capable avionics systems for guys like me and you who are flying on a budget and want all of the modern conveniences that a modern glass cockpit has to offer. They have uh, stuff like I've got here, which is the Sport EX, starting at a, the low price of about $1,800. And you can go up from there, adding all of the features that you want, all the way up to a fully integrated Horizon uh, system. And again, they've got a price point for everybody. So if you're building a light sport, if you're building experimental amateur build aircraft, really check out GRT Avionics and see what they have to offer. All right, everybody. So right now I'm climbing to uh, 4,000 feet because we're going to be intercepting. Uh, trim. We'll be intercepting the RNAV17 approach. So the point is here, I've got this all set up, I've got over here, which you can't really see in these videos, I've got the uh, GPS-175 from Garmin. So what we're going to be doing is intercepting this uh, this waypoint, which is a Razi. Okay, so we're going to level again, 4,000. Now the reason we're leveling 4,000 is, let me brief the approach to you guys. So for this approach, we're going to be doing the hold at the CASI, and we're just going to go direct from CASI, inbound to the uh, BARD VOR from 4,000, we'll be descending to 2,200. Again, on the uh, RNAV approach, so we'll be descending 2,200 feet, and again, we should be able to do all of this directly here on the EPIS, which will be nice to kind of keep everything straight that way. All right, so this should be taking me direct to Cassie after this point here. So I'm going to come over here, I'm going to go back, I'm going to go to my flight plan, I'm going to go to... Just What's the three-letter telephony for your... Uh, Z. Char Charlie off the Direct. Activate. Now, from here, we should go direct to the CASI intersection. Yeah, it's way outside my airspace, sir. You need LA Center on 2815. You see, as I activated there, it does show up on this side, and it directs me directly to the uh, CASI intersection. Okay, so now we're just doing this leg to CASI. And from CASI. Beach 21, Roger. Got no traffic zero between you and uh, Blight. Right of service terminal, squawk via fire, frequency change approved. So long. And so the, uh, when we do the missile, it'll be uh, climb straight ahead to uh, 800, then a uh, turning right turn back up to 4,000. We're going to do a different approach on the second flight, which will be the uh, VOR-17 approach. So in that case, I'll be swapping over from the uh, Garmin-175 uh, over to the uh, Valnav-2000 radio. Yuma approach experimental, 918, Lima November with request. Go ahead. Yeah, I'm uh, planning on doing the uh, RNAV-17 uh, approach, and I'm going to do a missed uh, back out to uh, bar, and I'm just going to start it from CASI intersection. Hey, Lima, November, Roger. VFR practice approach approved. No separation services will be provided. Report uh, CASI inbound, altimeter 3014. 3014, report CASI inbound. Hey, Lima, November. So as you know, as soon as I, I'm going to go inbound to CASI, we'll be dropping to 2000, and looking at the chart here. When we cross over the uh, BART VOR, we need to be at uh, 2,200 feet, in which case then we'll follow the uh, RNAV with ver the vertical guidance in. Now, as long as it says uh, LNAV, then we can follow the vertical guidance in on that, which will be nice. So in here, what I'm going to have to do is we're on GPS-1. We're going to select GPS-V. So we're going to arm the GPS-V. And so what that's going to do is that's going to allow us to, again, use that LPV-1 on the approach. All right. So from here, we should make a turn. We're going to basically make a procedure turn to come back inbound from Cassie. 
What's great about adding in the Garmin GPS 175 is it allows me to pre-program in things like holds and other procedures. What's great about that is it'll actually fly the procedure for you using uh, some connectivity between the GPS 175 and the uh, GRT autopilot. Okay, so the, right now it's telling me we're going to hold parallel to this. As soon as we cross over, which will be in about 20 seconds, 9, 8 is going to start the parallel. So 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, boom. We're going to be making a turn here to 340. Great. There we go. And it's taking it up to, uh, towards the OSEP, which is another intersection, and then from there, we'll be able to just come directly in back, because I did not load the hold, I just loaded the procedure with, and this is a, it's a procedure turn to change directions. We're going to be crossing over FARD at 2200, so we're going to come down to 2200. There we go. So we're going to set our descent right here. And how I've always been trained to do is just kind of pull the power out that way you stay trimmed for the, for the uh, airspeed you're on. Now we're making the what I want, which is 500 feet a minute. Which again, could have us crossing over the bar VOR. Before. So this green line here is telling us where that bottom of descent would be at our current. Approach, Empire 4802, off of Yuma, climbing through 3000, like via bar flight following to Phoenix Sky Harbor. Empire 4802, Squawk 1043. 1043, Empire 4802. Okay, so the green line again is that bottom of descent line. Bug should show us when we uh, should hit that 2200 feet. Hey, Lima November, change of common trap at 19.3, and uh, give me a call when you're back up. The wind's 34012. All right, we're 19.3, hey, Lima November. And there we go, we are maintaining that, and I'm going to start pulling off power here so we can start descending. And we'll keep it on the glide slope. I do have the field set, but we're going to follow this down to the minimums. The minimums in this case would be 500. Now you notice that the miss button pops up. Once that pops up, I have the ability to hit mist, and it'll shoot the mist approach. Approaching minimums. There we go. We're approaching our minimum. Adjust trim. Traffic. Traffic. You have traffic 600 feet below us, which I know about. It's on the runway. Traffic. I'm on the taxiway. And we're going off here at our minimums. Minimums. Miss. Minimums. Obstacle. Bonanza 9 Force here, change my frequency 124.7. Right now, I want to go to heading mode. Like that. I'm clear. Okay, so the reason we're doing that is because I want to swap to my navigator here. And I good, I've got that set correctly. Now we'll go back to GPS 1. Now I know that when I come inbound, I've got it set up so that as soon as I swap over, boom, I'm directly on the uh, correct navigator. So now we need to go back here and go to GNAV. There we go. Now this should fly us the whole procedure, which in this case should be a, uh, I believe it's going to be a, either a teardrop or a parallel. Okay, so we're going to brief the VOR17 approach. VOR one seven approach again crossover far VOR at uh, one thousand or sorry two thousand two hundred then it'll be down to six hundred eighty feet and with the timing at ninety knots it should give us four minutes.
Hey, go up direct to the Ford VOR. Hey, Lima November, are you uh, inbound again? Uh, Roger, you're eight. Lima November's inbound for Mark. Roger, change the CTAF approved. Give me a call back up, wind 34012. All right, order CTAF, eight, Lima November. All right, here we go. We're going to come inbound now. Start our descent. And human traffic experimental liner 18 Lima November is over part VOR inbound for runway 17 uh, Yuma. Okay, so here we're going to set our altitude to 600. 700. Go. Oh. Now chop and drop. And start time. Coming up on minimums. Approaching minimums. Our 680 feet is the minimum, so we're going to level off at 700, or a little bit before 700. Start my level off now. Go 700 feet. Minimums. Minimums. More power in there because I don't want to go below 680. There we go. And we got a timer on the uh, transponder. Obstacle. We got a minute. Oh, it should be one minute on the uh, GPS. Human traffic, M5318, Beach 99. We're uh, about 15 miles final for runway 26. We'll stop. Uh, you All right, there we go. And with that, we have definitely expired our time, so we would be doing the missed approach at this point. And we're going to remain suspended. There. Yuma Approach Experimental 8, Lima November is going to be departing air to the south, uh, cancel VFR flight following. 8, Lima November, radar service terminated, square VFR, frequency change approved, uh, the wind 35014, altimeter 014. Alright, 3014, 8, Lima November, thanks for the help, guys. Alright, 321, Gulf Mike, Mitsubishi type, cleared to Reno, Picacho 5, departure, then it's filed, climb to 4000, expect 16000, one zero minutes after departure, departure frequency 12555, squawk 6217. Yeah, somebody's getting, that's a cool point of Mitsubishi uh, turbo, so. All right, let's head back to Summerton. So everybody, I am back from that flight, and I'll tell you what, couldn't be happier in the performance of the airplane, and I hope that you guys got a good idea of how these avionics can be used for instrument flight. I know that when I was first starting, there wasn't a lot of information, so I had to spend a lot of time in the manuals to get it all figured out. Now with that, I got to give you some uh, little caveats. Number one, I am not a flight instructor, so you cannot take any of this as instruction. But there is one other thing that I need to mention, which is what is required for experimental aircraft to actually fly IFR. Number one is you do have to have some things that are certified. So for example, my GPS is a certified GPS. Now the radio um, it has to meet the qualifications outlined in the TSO standard, which according to Val Avionics, this radio does meet that standard. So because of that, I am able to use these avionics to fly in IFR. All right, one other caveat is this. When you do fly IFR, even though you are an experimental air aircraft, you still have to comply to all of the rules and regulations. So for example, you do need the 24 month transponder check. You need the pedostatic checks. All of the things would be required for any other aircraft to fly under instrument flight condition. So guys, with that, one of the things I'm grateful for is I was able to use my experimental aircraft to do the majority of my training for instrument flight. What it's also going to be nice is once it's done, I'll have this nice instrument platform to fly in the future on any trips that I'd like to take. 
But I've got a couple more things I've got to do before I get that rating. Number one is I've got to do the written test, which I should be doing here in the next week or so. After that, on to the check ride. But with that, I'm going to end the video here. I want to tell you guys, get in, the, get in the garage, get building, or if you got one of the things, get flying, and I'll see you guys in the air next time.